What's going on guys, this is Barrett here from The Subway coming to you with a ATO solved FAQ video for you guys to answer some of your questions on what I did with this particular ATO slash automatic water change system. There's quite a few questions in the comments uh, from the video, so I want to answer those over the past year or so. Um, you guys have put forth some very good uh, questions on things I did not cover. So the purpose of this about eight to 10 minute video is um, what I did to run a few lines, how I automate a few things, how I uh, clean stuff up in the sump area for the ATO system, etc. So hope you guys get some value out of these questions that have been answered. And if you have any more questions, of course, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to solve them uh, independently. Thanks guys. I run the base of the core for the Corellia to mix the salt water bin. So all these on these tanks in particular, on the lid here, they have a, a basically a little port that you can basically route the cable through. So all you do is push this blue part out. As you see, I just routed it through that blue part and it goes right in here. So it's pretty simple, uh, nothing crazy. I'm imagine if you didn't have one like this application, you'd have to drill probably a two inch hole um, and do one of the, you know, the desk um, grommets there to, to run it through. Uh, this one works perfect for this application in particular. Uh, the second question was, how do I determine when I mix salt in the tank? So I don't, so as you can see, well, I don't know if you can see or not, this tank's not all the way full. Right now I have about 25 gallons of salt in this particular container. I usually just wait till it's around 10 gallons to fill up with salt. And all I do is make sure this, this guy's filled up right here, transfer it over until it probably gets around, around I'd say, oh, 55 gallons here. This is this mark right here, which is just perfectly below the refill tube here. And then I um, do some basic math, get it in the vicinity of where I want the salt in terms of specific gravity of 1.026. And then if I can adjust it from here and there, I'll do that as well. But that's kind of when I determine uh, when I mix the salt. Another question was, was um, where I got the tanks? They're from a place called Noresco here in Shawnee, Oklahoma. So if you go to Norwesco, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, you can order from their website, you can either have them shipped or in my case, they're only about 45 minutes away, so I went and got them from the actual distributor and uh, picked them up. And they're, these were, in particular, I believe, around 1.30 a piece, if I remember right. And this was obviously about two years ago, or almost a year and a half ago. So nothing crazy. So the next question was, where did I get the stands? These stands are simply a hot water tank uh, stand from Home Depot. Obviously a hot water tank generally is 50 gallons, so these were roughly 55 gallons. I didn't check any safety measures, so use them at your own risk. But these hold 55 gallons, etc., perfectly. There's no straining, there's no bowing on the legs at all. Um, they work just fine, and they're, you know, they're uh, galvanized steel, so they've taken some salt and wear and tear just fine over the past year and a half. I don't see any problems with these uh, on the next house. Uh, next question was, how much was this whole system? Well, considering these tanks are around 130 a piece, so you were right at 260. Uh, pump was right around 170, I believe. So uh, whatever that is, that's 430. Uh, plus the plumbing, so these guys are you know, right around 25, 30 bucks a piece. So I have four of those, it's 100 bucks, plus uh, some fittings, some unions, um, miscellaneous stuff. So that's another probably 150, some plumbing. And then of course, you have the, the dose, which is what are these, 250 or so, 299. So these are $300, so you're looking at, um, you know, it's 550, I'm sorry, my mouth hurt, 650-ish. Um, plus this is right around $300 for the seven stage. Um, and then I, I have to booster pump laying around, so if you want to booster pump, that's another 120 bucks. Um, and then obviously your miscellaneous RO tubing to go through the, up through the ceiling, and that's another you know, 30 or 40 bucks or something like that. So it's not exactly cheap. You're probably looking at it right around, I'd say the budget for a thousand bucks and be surprised if it's cheaper. Um, but that's kind of how the prices I worked with on this particular system. Uh, the other question was, was how do I make it safe through the ceiling? Uh, all my plumbing through the ceiling. Well, I don't know if it's safe or not, 
but it is use one cable. So I don't use any kind of unions up top. I use basically a non or continuous RO tube from when it leaves the reservoir all the way through the ceiling down to my tank. There's no splits, there's no fittings, it's all one. So that's probably the best bet you can have to ensure that there's no leaks anywhere else. Um, that's what I did. Obviously your system and your setup might be different, but that's what I did to ensure there's gonna be no leaks in my attic and uh, ruin some drywall in my ceiling. Which ATO pump we use for, um, to make this thing work from the garage. So I use the uh, Innovative Marine, which I believe they don't sell anymore. It's some clearance at Booker Supply, so I'm not exactly sure if they actually sell it anywhere. But I use the Innovative Marine Hydrofill Titanium. And what this does, it basically has two electrode sensors, which I'll show you here in a second, that determine where the water level is and therefore um, activating a 110 outlet, which is this guy right here. And then I use the bulk reef supply 50 milliliter per minute um, top off pump. So basically this will trigger that the water level is low. It'll then obviously turn on this pump, which pumps all the way from the garage. So this guy pumps, you know, probably 50 feet away up the ceiling, through my attic, down into the ATO reservoir and pulls water from there. All right, so here's the two electrodes. As you can see, this one right now is right touching the water. So if I lift this thing up, it activates the pump and put it back down. This other one down as well, because it has to have both sensors, it turns it off. So what you'll see on these pumps, on these electrodes is that sometimes they can get a little bit dirty and it'll, it'll activate the pump some more. So you wanna make sure you periodically clean those to make sure that it has good contact with the water. It doesn't have any uh, film or detritus built upon the electrodes or else this pump will not work, work well. So what it does, once this sensor senses low water, it will pump all the way until the other sensor has contact with the water surface and then it will shut off. So you'll see that I'll, this one's currently in the water. I'm gonna move this up. It turns it on, but even if I put it out, down in the water, it won't turn off. Therefore, what it's really searching for is that second sensor, which is this guy right here. And so once the water level, for instance, comes up and touches this one, it will turn off just like that. And it resets internally. So now I can move this up a little bit and um, not worry about it. So that's that how, that's how the water pumps from the garage into my sump area to top off. All right, guys, those are the questions that I had answered for y'all on this video today. Of course, uh, it's not all inclusive. If there's anything else you guys want to know that I did not cover on the two videos, please uh, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys got some inspiration or just some how-tos on how I do it and how you might want to do it for your own system. It does help with stability tremendously. Um, my parameters are very, very stable due to the automatic top-off and the automatic water chain system that I have uh, set up that I've shown you guys this past this past year. So again, if you guys like the videos, please subscribe. I do appreciate the thumbs up and the comments you guys leave. So please keep doing that. And if there's anything else you guys want to see, in this particular setup, let me know. I'd be glad to do it for you. I hope you guys are doing well. Take care.